Howdy folks, <clears throat> it's Friday, June 28, 2019. Um, I talk about setting up my, uh, this is the drill press that I bought. Linda went to Harbor Freight and bought. Really does a nice job. But um, you can see I have what they call a Forstner bit. And um, <laughs> what I do is I have <coughs> this cedar two by six marked uh, where I want to have the drill press go. And all I got to do is mark or line this mark up with the center of that um, Forstner bit, which is just a little point. And so what I do is I bring it down so that I can see where the point will be. And if I'm on the line or close, I, uh, I run the, the drill. Now, you know, just to give you an idea, uh, this table and this table I had built, well, probably a year ago so that I could run long lumber through the planer. Um, Linda and I decided to use these two tables to set the drill press on. And so what we did is we have a, a two by eight right here and we ran that from one table to the next, and we just have the uh, thing uh, so, uh, clamped, this uh, drill press clamped to this board um, with two clamps. Uh, you know, and then when we did it, we didn't have uh, this big board or that big board. <coughs> So that first day, we were setting it and clamping it each time, and that, that would have taken us a week to to uh, do the cutting. So um, one night, uh, actually the night uh, after we had first set this up, I was laying in bed and thinking about it, and I thought, well, you know, I'll just bring it up. Uh, and so I used these two cedar blocks and I clamped those to the table. Um, did a, a couple of little boards here to support it. Uh, shim board, and then I got a little clamp there. And the same thing over here so that uh, we have this thing pretty level. And I'd show that to you, except I can't find my level. You know, we were in here yesterday doing a lot of stuff and um, I'm I don't see all my tools. Um, but anyways, that's that board is pretty level, which means then that that um, drill press is going to come down um, and make a nice vertical hole. Um, I had talked about what we had uh, worked on yesterday. You know, I had cut all of these pieces of um, drills, drilled all the holes, John had ripped two by fours in half. These here are the spindles. They're just aluminum. And then Jim pounded them all in. Uh, and each one of these has a two by four mate to it that will get pounded on the top. So, um, you know, it's a, there's a method to the madness here. It takes a bit of time but it should look nice. Now we have to have a four inch space between each of these uh, aluminum tubes. And uh, so that was some of the math that I did. And, uh, oh, I don't even see where my sheet is oh there's my sheet but you know I'm pretty good at math and so I think it was Tuesday John says well we got to figure out how we end up with the even space on either end and do the four and the four inch and the like so like here you know I did this with a 69 and a half um length and uh anyways i got all done with all my math and that came to three and seven eighths space 
And uh, then I just transferred that up to here so that I know what my space is. If, for instance, my board is 69 inches, I need a three and five eighths. So there was a lot of, a lot of math on that. And uh, uh, it, everything worked out just, just great. Now I talked about the Sapili lumber. Uh, this is a piece of Sapili. Um, it's a quasi-African mahogany. Um, we had, I had bought two pieces. I think that's about a $90 piece. Um, that ultimately is what we'll use for the veneers on the outside of our front doors. Um, and so uh, what we had to do on the other piece that we did is we ran it through the bandsaw. And um, so this is a fence and you can see there's a blade. And so this is about as wide as that Sapili board. And in order to keep this fence from flexing, what we did is put a two by four back here and a clamp. Now, anybody that's ever worked with me knows that I like clamps. And um, so we got a clamp for that board, which keeps this from flexing. And that way we get a nice even cut. And then I had made this box last fall. And uh, it's, it's a box and there's no opening. Um, and so what I did is we put it on its side because this is about how high that Sapili board was that we cut to run through here. And with the box, it doesn't, the board doesn't shift the, uh, to the right. And with that two by four blocking, the fence isn't gonna shift to the left. And so consequently, we'll get a nice even cut on our Sapili. Um, now I want to show you what it looked like after we uh, cut it. Uh, there's, you see all those clamps. Linda glued up a one foot section. She had hoped that she could do another one yesterday, but she wasn't able to get to it. But right now she has, I think she has nine with that one. Uh, all she needs is another five. So we're walking in. This will be Linda's sewing room. Uh, there's a piece of glass that'll go in for my door to my workshop. These are some pieces of maple that I'm going to use either for uh, probably butcher block, uh, um, butcher block cutting boards uh, over the next hopefully several years but you remember how rough that Sapili looked we ran it through and uh, so that's the graining on it like I said this wood is from Africa it'll be uh, this will probably be a piece that goes on the <coughs> bottom uh, this one here this is an eight foot piece. And we cut that down a little bit, like to six and a half inches, just in the interest of having less waste. And that will be our style. So um, what we'll do is uh, once Linda gets done gluing up her other nine feet or uh, five feet of countertop, we'll uh, turn our attention to gluing veneers. Now here's a core for the front door uh, for a style and a style. This is the uh, rail core for the top. Not exactly sure how, how, uh, how big our bottom piece will be, but this right now is three pieces, uh, the very bottom above it and sandwiched in between would be a, a smaller little field uh, that would be indented and that would give us um, a little bit of 
uh, dimension on the outside. That sapili will get stained a very dark stain <clears throat> and then with some nice varnish it'll really really pop. Uh, you can see I think Linda has 20 clamps on here. When she does this she'll put a piece of angle iron on top and then she uses this parchment paper like you would cook with. And the reason she puts parchment paper down is the glue will not stick to the parchment paper. And so on the bottom, we put a piece of wood and on the top, we put our angle iron. So she's done that to keep this thing, to keep the boards flat. And so she has one, two, three, four, five, six. She has six pieces of angle iron that she put on here in the interest of keeping this countertop flat. And the reason we're doing that is then there's less waste as we try to get the whole surface flat. Because remember, we'll be gluing up 14 one foot sections. And so uh, we have a specific thickness that we want and uh, a specific, um, and they all have to match. So, well, that's about it. We're at 11 and minutes 30 seconds so thanks for following